hi and welcome to another vlog in this video i'm going to be talking about um mental health and in particular suicide because i saw on linkedin yesterday or the day before whenever it was that it was suicide awareness day and so if that's going to trigger you you can stop this video now but I'm going to talk about my own experience and why actually why it is important to talk about it. So if this is your first time here on my channel, welcome. I'm Helen and I post guided meditations and I talk about challenges that I've been through in my life. And so in this video, I'm going to talk about some experience, experiences I've had over the last few years with, with my mental health and in particular suicide ideation. Um, and one thing I have discovered and even my doctor said this, that the people who talk about it, talk about their feelings and their thoughts, they're trying to avoid them, but actually less likely to follow through. And um, so we probably all know somebody who's died by suicide, and that's there's still shame and stigma around that. And it started for me in with my sort of, uh, well, I, I hit sort of rock bottom between 2021, middle of 2021 to early 2023. So for about a year and a half, I was not in a good place. And I was having these thoughts. And fortunately, because of my meditation practice, I was able to stay present with them. But it's not easy. It's not, I don't recommend it unless you've got a very, very solid practice. And I still needed support as well from mental health services, my doctor, the helpline that I called, often called in the middle of the night um so it's really you know I, and i think it, it got to that point where i realized part of the problem was i was trying to do it all on my own and i felt like a failure because i couldn't and there's nothing wrong with asking for support and we see all these things that it's okay to not be okay well it's not okay to not be okay and i think that needs to change and um uh, and, and if we know that actually it's not okay, then we're more likely to reach out and ask for help. And by talking about it, and, and, and even what your thoughts are around it. So for me, it was like, I'm, I just wanted to go jump off, off the pier. And there's, there was no rationality to these thoughts if I was able to come back to the present moment and look around me and see that I was safe. Um, yeah, there was a lot of anxiety about how I was going to pay my bills because I was signed off work. And the DWP, Department of Work and Pensions in the UK, didn't help because, oh, you look fine. Even though my doctor said there's no way that you, you should be working at the moment. You, I need to focus on myself and, and getting better. And of course, there's ways that people will, you know, can turn to unskillful ways of dealing with it. Whether that's like drugs, alcohol, food, um, instead of finding more practical ways and more supportive ways to get through that. And so it, it's, it's like, and also finding people that, that understand, because not everybody, not everybody will. And so especially, you know, if on the outside you look okay, your life looks wonderful, they might think, oh, well, how can you be feeling like that? So, you know, you can see here I am in Australia now, beautiful blue skies and sea behind me. And actually, I feel pretty good right now. And I've been traveling for three months nearly. Um, I've got a few days left before I fly back to the UK. And there's been, you know, there's been challenging times while I've been here. You know, it's not all, it's not all perfect. And I talked about that in a previous video, but that still goes with you wherever you are. And, and it's like, okay, you can go on a two week holiday you know, sort of like these to, to try and escape, but you can't escape yourself, especially like when you're traveling. It's, it, for me, that's different to being on holiday. It's not been a holiday. I've still been working while, while I've been traveling as well because that's I'm creating that life for myself now. And when I go back to the UK, I'm selling up and making traveling my, my full-time lifestyle because it actually doesn't cost any more. <laughs> In fact, it probably costs less than paying my rent and bills every month because I live on my own. So anyway, that's an aside. So going back to what I was saying before about mental health. And and so, yeah, yeah, it's about finding support. I mean, so for example, my parents, I couldn't talk to them about it. They're a different generation, but they're happy to help me out financially 
which I'm very grateful for because I would have been homeless otherwise. There was no way that I could have afforded my rent. And if you're in the UK and you know about the DWP, me naively assuming that because I've worked and paid my taxes when I'm ill, because I'm self-employed, I could get support. But I did what I'd learnt, that actually there's all these hoops you have to jump through. You have to prove that, that you're even though your doctor signed you off you still have to prove it and how can you prove mental health because you go out for half an hour you might be okay but they don't see the everyday day reality of what life's like for you at home and there's no common sense that says oh well maybe this person doesn't look like the normal type of person who would be claiming benefits you know she's a professional woman maybe she would rather be working if she, if she could so anyway that aside, that, uh, so obviously it's just doing my bit to raise, raise awareness that it could be happening to anybody that you know, and maybe it's even happening to you. So if, if it is, do reach out for support, you know, find the right support. My, my doctors, I was very lucky. I know it's a bit of a lottery, but I'm lucky that mine took mental health very seriously and they had a mental health social prescriber and and she was able to also put me um, in touch with like where, where I could get some extra financial support. So I got a grant to help me pay uh, my energy bills. Also, because I'm a registered carer, because I have a son with drug and alcohol problems. I've also talked about that in a previous video. Um, there was support through there. So, you know, if you're a carer, look into that. Find your local carer support group because there's things that you can get for that or if there's anything else where, you you know, if you're a woman uh, over a certain age, if you've got any kind of health condition or disability, there's actually a lot of money out there. You know, we read in the in the news that, oh, you know, the, the cost of living crisis and all that. But actually, if, it, it's not always easy to find. But... It was like, took some digging and citizens advice, if you can get hold of them, they were helpful too. So, um, I mean, obviously this is all in the UK and there's probably similar things if, if, if you're in a different part of the world. I'm kind of, I've seen actually as I've been traveling around Australia that I've seen things for, for carers, support, things like that. So there's obviously a lot of carer support going on here. That's like unpaid carers, not um, people that work as carers who might also be unpaid carers like I am. So uh, that's, so it's, it's about, you, you do have to get resourceful and it's not easy when you're, when you're feeling so low and, um, uh, and you know so it might be that that you need some kind of medication to help you get through it I got fortunately I was able to get through without it um I almost got to that point and then it was like a switch went off in my head and it's like actually I think at that point I was so low and it was like I'd had enough of this you know um and then I started reading a lot about trauma as well so this probably all mental health neurodiversity and all that stuff it's all trauma you read about trauma all these um symptoms and then that's that's what it is and 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 people are talking about it more now and i found it helpful reading about it because it helped me understand why i was responding in the way i was how it was affecting my brain and that why can't i control this and, and because it's like very deep seated, it's in the primitive part of your brain, those automatic reflexes. So, um, sorry, I was just looking, I couldn't see my bag, it's on the bench there. But anyway, yeah, so uh, it may be, I'm not, I did have counselling. That was sort of helpful, but not really. Um, but again, the problem because the problem is with like counselling. Also, um, what's the other thing called that I did? CBT, cognitive behavioural therapy. It's all like talk. It's all heady stuff. Whereas not trauma, it's it's in the body. It's like you feel into your feelings. You have to, you know, where am I feeling in the body? And, and so having a like a somatic therapist is trauma informed. They know this, and they can they will know. They'll be able to tell when you're not feeling safe because if you're not feeling safe you can't heal and that was one of the things I realized afterwards that was why it was so difficult for me because I didn't feel safe enough or safe enough you know you don't 
might not be totally safe because I was anxious how am I going to afford to pay my rent next month and then when my parents were able to help me out and then I got a grant and then I could relax a bit and then focus more on my healing but um and that's one thing that our society doesn't get it's like that people can't heal they can't work unless you know Maslow's hierarchy of needs unless they've got their basic needs met and um and actually the whole thing that I went through with the DWP it must have cost them thousands and I think it would have been cheaper for them to pay me um to pay my rent for a few months just so I could get my head straight and didn't have to worry about how it was paying the bills or trying to find work or whatever but no <laughs> but I don't know whether things will change with the new government <laughs> I don't hold my breath and at the end you know it is it's down to us really um so I read everything I could you know it was like going down a rabbit hole it started with a book I read called um patriarchy stress disorder which is about you know the way women have been treated and right now there's some terrible things going on in the news but we have to remember that actually things although there's still things happening it's better than it used to be it's not perfect by any means but we're still like moving in the right direction and that's why i think you know talking about it raising awareness because when i hit rock bottom first in 2021 it was like a lid coming off a pressure cooker all the stuff that had been building up from years and years and years and years and it was like going back you know through my childhood and then my you know thinking about my parents childhoods their parents you know and it all passed on from generation to generation because we're not taught you know how to so if we if we don't feel safe enough as a child then that affects the development of our brain really and and this is why am i struggling still to get a good job or have a successful business and because of all that was still going on in my brain unconsciously it was diagnosed as ADHD and I talk about my journey there in the um, deconstructing ADHD and a lot of people and I just think you know we're going to we're getting to the tipping point now where they're going to realize hang on a minute what is this ADHD it's everybody's trauma really and of course it's been exacerbated by the COVID and all that so um i hope i i, I yeah because i also want to inspire people okay we can talk about stuff and yeah it's, it's pretty crap when you're going through it but i just want to also show you that there's light on the end of the tunnel i mean look where i am now it's beautiful <laughs> my heart is full um well i was feeling i was feeling all the feels this morning <laughs> but anyway um the, but uh, yeah i just want to show there is light at the end of the tunnel and and also that it's never going to be perfect i mean when i came here to australia i didn't know how i was even going to make my money last the three months but i just thought i'm going to start living by faith and that was all that i had to do really when i was going through those mental health challenges it like it was really like an act of faith that it's going to be it's going to be okay as long as i'm all right here in the moment i pay today i have a roof over my head today i have enough to eat a bed to sleep on you know and right and then starting to come into that kind of mentality and focusing on what i had already and and then what you focus on expands and that's not to say you ignore the other stuff but you but it's about putting it in perspective that it's not the whole story um because when you're in it it's not that easy don't get me wrong i'm not being flippant here because it, it, it can be all consuming but it's like when that switch went, went off my head and i start to see a glimmer of hope because literally a week before that i was just like i was on a retreat and i was i was i'd had an awful time to, to go into a D, dwp hearing i was like I had really bad eczema on my arms and my they were it's itchy bleeding and that was all stress related it cleared up after that but um and then i it was in the middle of the night it's very dark there's no light pollution there so you can't see anything i woke up and, and i woke up and there was just like this tiny 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 little voice deep inside my head that said helen you deserve to live and i thought yes i do i deserve that just as much as anybody else and so do you 
so thank you for listening if you have any comments or questions you can leave them in the in the comments below or or send me an email i put my email address in there because you might not want it to be on on youtube publicly and i understand that and yeah probably you know most of the things i've been through in my life <laughs> it, it, it's i was at a speaker's event yesterday and a couple of women there were speaking one who'd oh she i think she'd been in an abusive marriage the other one had lost all her money single mother with kids i think yeah i've been there if, if most things that have happened have happened to me and i'm still here i'm still traveling i'm making the most of my life i don't know what's going to happen next week or next month nobody does so you might as well live in the moment i'll oh, thank you again for listening and i'll see you again on the next video in the meantime take care go well lots of love bye